he had on the land of Egypt because of his faithfulness to God. And God was at work through Joseph, even though Joseph didn't realize it. Joseph didn't realize God's plan. And I'm sure when he was bouncing down the road on the back of that donkey or camel or, or, or in that wagon or being half drugged along and he was being as a teenager sold as a slave in, in Egypt, he, he sure didn't know what the end result was going to be. And then neither do we, do we? Neither do we. So let's look at some lessons for us today. Not everything will go in life as we plan. Hmm. Amen. How many of you had life go exactly as you thought it would? Yeah. No hands, no takers on that one. No. But I want to say to you that God sees your faithfulness and He will reward you. And I want to also say that God is with us and is working. You believe that? Yes. And one of the one of the advantages of growing older is, is you can reflect on a lifetime of God's faithfulness. And those of us who are here that are in that senior category, I can look back and and most of you know that. Jan and I have walked through some deep waters with our families and with her health and everything in the last 15 years. But I can also look back and through all that and see how God was at work and is still at work. And so we need to look on Him. There's a song that you know, let us say, keep your eyes on Jesus. Focus less on the news and on the negative and ask God to open your eyes to see Him at work in the midst of trying times. God is at work today. God is at work in the United States of America today. God has not abandoned us. It may feel that way. It may seem that way. But I want to say God is still on the throne. Got to give an amen. amen. Now we can say that, but do we believe it? It's hard to see. It may be difficult for us to see. You may wonder about that. But I want to say that God is here and God is moving. And I just want to give you a couple of examples. There are, there are many, many people talking about God today. More people talking about God than there has been for a long time in our culture. Why is God sending the pandemic? They want to blame God, but at least God's in their consciousness. Also, there's been a sharp rise on online Bible sales during the corona pandemic. Across the world, people have been turned to the good book in noticeably large numbers. And with increase in the United Kingdom, this comes from the United Kingdom, and more copies than usual are being sold in Ireland and the USA. Right. Furthermore, there was a global increase in downloads of the Bible app in March across Google Play and App Store. The most popular English Bible was installed on smartphones more than 2 million times, the highest ever for that month. I'm told that for, for bookstores that are still open, Bibles have been sold out. There's been a 55% incre increase in Bible sales. That's good news. Amen. That's good news. With an increased presence of churches on the internet, more people are watching church services than ever before. People who've never gone to church, they're sitting at home Sunday morning, they need something to do, they can't go to work, they're turning on the TV, or they're turning to go on the internet, and boom, they're there finding church services. We have seen an outpouring from the, from churches, and not just churches, but from community at large. We've seen an outpouring of, of, of material blessings on our, on our society. Uh, uh, Open Link and other organizations like that have had food given to them that's beyond measure. And, and to, to give assistance. I was on a, I was on a Zoom uh, meeting on Thursday with <clears throat> local uh, mayors and municipal leaders uh, here in the Upper Perk region and uh, our guest presenter was the uh, uh, head of the state police. Uh, she's the community coordinator or whatever from the state police from the Skipback Barracks. And she was talking about some of the issues that the police are facing 
and we asked her about how they are, are experiencing this whole thing. And she said, you can't believe, we can't believe the outpouring of love and support from our community. She said, we've had more food brought to our barracks than we ever saw in our lifetime. Pizzas and cakes and cookies and pies. She said, we're inundated with food. They said, it feels good to know that we're appreciated. That's good news. Not everybody thinks that the cops should be done away with. The churches have placed phone calls to members that cannot meet in person. You all have been, over the last number of months, been receiving phone calls you didn't recall before. It's resulted in contact and prayer ministry. Some have gone shopping and done errands for neighbors. We did, we did the, I got the mail for our 97 year old neighbors for a number of weeks. They felt safe to go to the post office. Scott Ross said the bike and soul shop was selling bicycles in record numbers. In fact, he's out looking for used bikes to buy so he has something to resell. That's incredible. Churches have donated food to those that can't go out during the coronavirus. Churches and businesses, and I, I mentioned that, a record number of, 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 of donations to food banks. And I just want to toot the horn of my wife a little bit here at Perk. As you know, we have a joy luncheon every, every second Tuesday of the month. And in March, we couldn't meet, uh, no, for April, we couldn't meet. And Jen said, I think I'd have made the meal anyway. So she made the meal, and, and Pastor Mike and, and uh, Don Noel and, and Tanya and others, we delivered to the people from Perk who we normally attend. Some of you got that meal. And what appreciation she was. That was in April. In May, we did the same thing. June comes along and she said, I think we should do it for everybody that depends the joy, not just the people from Perk. And so 57 meals were prepared. And, and they came driving, driving by and picked them up uh, on, uh, on, that, on that Tuesday. But that's an expression. That's good. That's, that's an expression how God is at work in all this. And then, boy, my time. Stop the call. Um, <laughs> in, in Helichingo, the village that we go to, uh, the, 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 Bonnie called me and said, hey, uh, Mauricio and Jackie are in touch with them. The farmers in that area are to have difficulty selling their blueberry crops because the markets are closed. She said, street markets are closed. So they can't get rid of their blueberries. Mm -hmm. She said, would, would the Mennonite sisters in, in, in the United States make a video of how to make jam and send it to us so maybe they can make jam and sell the jam and, and therefore market their crops. So Janet and Rita Hoover and her Rita's daughter, they made this video, put it up on a proper YouTube channel, sent it down there, and we got pictures back, they made a batch of jelly, the, the, they're making a label for it, they're going to take it to the city and sell it to the, to the women in the church in Monte Maria when they regather again. So you have, you have this multicultural from the United States to Mexico City to the village working together for the kingdom of God. Amen? That's good news! And we're a part of it! You're a part of it. Last week, Pastor Mike reminded us that we are a people of good news. Amen? Amen. And so, you know, I, I, there's just so many opportunities. With racial tensions, we can share a biblical example. We can share the kingdom of God. We need to be up here. If we get down in here with all the, the dirt and junk, we're no better than everybody else. We have the truth that there is one race, the human race. But there's many cultures, many cultures, and we can learn from every culture. So God calls us as believers to rise above the conflict of the day and see life from his perspective. We need to walk in wisdom and see how God is at work in ways that we are now experiencing. God has a plan for this world and we don't see the whole picture. But God's kingdom is greater than the United States of America. God's kingdom is greater than any nation of this world. His kingdom is spiritual. His kingdom is eternal. And nothing and no one will stop its fulfillment. Amen? Amen. So remember, God is sovereign. God is at work in all things. God's kingdom is greater than the kingdom of this world. And he is with us. And he will never leave us or forsake us. In the meantime, we work for justice. We work for peace. And we pray. That his kingdom come and his will will be done. Amen. Janelle, come and lead us in a final song as we wrap up our service. Won't we stand?
God's grace and peace be with you. And uh, uh, have a great week. And we'll see you again next Sunday. We're going to go uh, green this week. Uh, for whatever that means. But uh, anyways, that's, that's how we close the prayer. God, thank you that you are a faithful God. And you are with us. Thank you for the encouragement from your word through Joseph this morning. Now dismiss us with your grace and your peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Have a great day.